maisha ya Kobo James tutajifunza hekima ambayo sasa inaweza kutupa stability kwenye mahusiano lakini point ya muhimu sana natamani uipate leo hii kwa kwanza nayo ufahamu kwamba mahusiano yanatakiwa kujengwa ndoa zinajengwa familia inajengwa usikae ukawaza kwamba baada ya ndoa it, it's done no baada ya ndoa ni nini unataka kukijenga kwenye kwenye ndoa yako ni nini ambacho unataka kukiacha watoto wako waone kwamba katika ndoa ambayo wazazi wangu walikuepo niliona kwamba walikuwa na uvumilivu walikuwa kweli wakati unaona kuna wakati wanapitia ugumu labda ya finance okay labda kuna kiti, kuna kipindi ambapo kweli kuna pindi tunaona kwamba baba alikuwa mkali lakini tunaona kuna namna ambavyo mama alikuwa anajua namna ya kumtuliza baba kuna kipindi mama alikuwa ni mkali lakini tunaona kuna namna ambavyo baba mama um, mama alikuwa anajua namna kumtuliza baba baba alikuwa anajua namna kumtuliza mama sasa unaacha legacy ambayo sasa inakuwa inajengwa stability ya yeah? uvumilivu lakini tukiwa tuna mindset ya I'm having you know I'm having this marriage I'm having this marriage not I'm building this marriage hiyo tayari ni problem sasa unakuta sasa watu wengi wanakuwa kwenye ndoa it's just the beginning of that kwa sababu they were having this woman baada sasa ya kuingia kwenye ndoa nao ndoa inahitaji stability inahitaji sasa kujenga unakuta sasa anachoka kwa sababu aliwaza tu I'm just having this woman. I'm just having this man. Lakini sasa marriage demand more than just having. Marriage demands building, building a relationship, building a legacy, building something that unajua kwamba ninakiacha kwenye familia watoto wangu wakirithi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sasa hapo tumeangalia kuhusu Um, kujengwa and i wanted to focus on that word ili hata mtu akiwa anawaza ana, anawaza relationship awaze kwamba i want to get into a relationship with the mindset of building a relationship now please before you take a step let's begin to consult god let's talk to god first tujue kwamba kweli tuna step in kwa sababu hakuna sema ambapo ina maumivu kama relationship relationship zina maumivu makubwa sana sasa all the time Mungu ana anaganga ana mioyo kwa sababu the only person who can heal a heart is God. Hakuna dawa panado inayoponya moyo. I'm telling you. Now that's why the Bible says that only God heals the broken heart. If only God is the one who heals the broken heart. Hivi unajua ana case ngapi za broken heart alizonazo sasa hivi. Then to us sasa hospitali ya Mungu. Just kwenye relationship kwamba Yesu Mungu Yesu ana hospitali ambao sasa relationship problems. Akiangalia sasa wagonjwa wa mioyo ni wangapi? Sasa why are we teaching au kwa nini tunaleta hili neno kwako leo hii? Ni kwa sababu sasa Mungu anatamani kupunguza wagonjwa wa mioyo ili sasa ipungue kuganga mioyo au kuponya mioyo, afocus zaidi kwa kusaidia kujenga relationship nzuri. Ili sasa uponyaji upungue lakini sasa akusaidie kwamba kuliko kuumia moyo bora kuandaa mapema usiumie moyo kwa sababu gharama ya ma, ku, kurejesha moyo it's not a joke it, it really takes time na wengi wanakuta wanaingia kwenye relationship nyingine bado mioyo yao haiko sawa na matunda yake sio mema so natamani leo hii tuwaze relationship kwa tofauti kidogo tuwaze kwamba tukiwa tunaingia kwenye relationship we, we desire we should desire to build relationship na kama unaona kwamba you're not certain of the relationship you have kama huyu ni mke wangu au huyu ni mume wangu basi why don't you pull back a bit talk to god more about relationship ili sasa usiwe sababu ya kusababisha maumivu kwa kwa mtu mwingine usiwe sababu ya kuumiza moyo wa mtu ili sasa mahusiano yetu yaendelee kujengeka kwa kwenye amani na utulivu sasa turudi kwenye neno la Mungu tusome kitabu cha Yakobo ambapo sasa tuna tunajifunza hekima wengi tumekuwa tukimsi Mungu every time when you see a person having a problem au labda akiwa anafanya maamuzi kwenye mahusiano unaweza kutaa mtu anakuambia kwamba huyu una hekima au ukiongea certain way anakuambia huyu ana hekima hajibu kwa hekima yani okay so i know kwamba Mungu amekuwa akireceive a lot of prayer points ya hekima especially ukijasikia huna hekima unaweza kusema eh hey, jamani inabidi Uh, ni rudi sasa kwa Mungu nitafute hekima. All right. Sasa how do we know that um, maombi yetu yamejibiwa? How do we know kwamba hekima tunayo? Kwa sababu sasa tukisoma kitabu cha Yakobo 
Nikisoma kitabu cha Yakobo mlango wa tatu. Natamani tuanze mstari wa kumi na mstari wa kumi na tatu. Yakobo tatu kumi na tatu. Nasema ni nani aliye na hekima na ufahamu miongoni mwenu basi naionyeshe hiyo kwa maisha yake mema na kwa matendo yake yaliyotendwa kwa unyenyekevu utokanao na hekima basi aionyeshe hiyo kwa maisha yake mema let's just say basi aionyeshe hayo au basi na aionyeshe hiyo kwa ndoa yake njema kwa familia yake njema tuanze kwamba tukitaka kujua kwamba huyu mtu ana hekima na ufahamu ambapo sasa siku leo sijafocus na ufahamu lakini sana sana hekima wasema kwamba hekima tunaipima kuaionyeshe basi na ionyeshe hiyo kwa maisha yake mema na kwa matendo yake yaliyotendwa kwa unyenyekevu utokanao na hekima aha kwa hapa tunaelewa kwamba kuna tukitaka kujua sasa kwamba hii relationship ina hekima sasa sasa hivi tunasema kwamba i'm not saying kwamba Um, how to get wisdom kwa sababu wisdom neno la Mungu anasema if you don't have wisdom pray omba Mungu akupe wisdom lakini sasa utajuaje kwamba haya maombi yamejibiwa utajuaje kwamba una hekima kumbuka tumejifunza ule mstari tukasema kwamba neno la Mungu anasema ni bora kula ukoko mkavu ukiwa na amani na utulivu kuliko kukaa kwenye nyumba ya karamu kukiwa na magomvi na tukajifunza kwamba kwa nini hii nyumba ina magomvi tuangalie msingi. Tukaenda kwenye mithali 24:3 ambapo sasa tunaambiwa kwamba hekima kupitia hekima nyumba hujengwa. Unajua kuna sehemu ya Biblia inasema kwamba mwanamke mpumbavu huharibu nyumba yake. Kwa hiyo sasa you can understand the seriousness ya sio nyumba physical lakini the seriousness of ndoa na familia. Ambapo sasa Mungu anasema kwamba hekima it's very important. Sasa natamani tuende kwenye mstari wa 17. Kwa sababu hapa Yakobo ana introduce kwamba Ukitaka kujua mwenye hekima utampimaje according to God. Sawa eh? Anasema tuanze kwanza mstari wa 18. Anasema Lakini ikiwa mna wivu na ni wenye chuki, mm-hmm. na ugomvi mioyoni mwenu, msijisifu kwa ajili ya hayo wala msikatae kweli. Sasa lakini mkiwa na lakini mkiwa na wivu na ni wenye chuki na ugomvi mioyoni mwenu so automatic ukirudi kwenye ile mstari wa 17 mithali 17 moja utagundua kwamba hii nyumba iliyo na magomvi haina msingi wa hekima kwa sababu neno la Mungu linaambia kwamba ukitaka kujua kwamba kuna changamoto ya hekima utajiunua kwamba wivu Mtu mwenye wivu manake utampima kwamba mtu mwenye wivu kuna na ana lack wisdom. Chuki ni lack of wisdom. Ugomvi ni lack of wisdom. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Nasema hekima ya namna hiyo haishuki kutoka mbinguni, bali ni ya kidunia, isiyo ya kiroho na ya kishetani. Kwa maana panapokuwa mstari wa 16, kwa maana panapokuwa na wivu na ubinafsi ndipo penye machafuko na uovu wa kila namna. Manake hapo hakuna hekima kwa maana panapokuwa na wivu na ubinafsi ndipo penye machafuko na uovu wa kila namna. Sasa ukisoma ile mithali 17 moja, ukileta hapa kwa Yakobo tatu, ukianza mstari wa 13 kwenda chini utagundua kwamba hii nyumba ina changamoto. Kwamba kuna ishu wa ubinafsi, kuna ishu wa wivu. Sasa imagine a relationship or having ndoa ambayo sasa ina hii changamoto ya wivu na muonea wivu mke wangu na muonea wivu mume wangu automatic Mungu na neno la Mungu linaambia kwamba hiyo wisdom hiyo hiyo lack of ku care yani kuwaza kwamba you know um ni mwazie huyu mtu mwe, mema ni si ni siwe na wivu sababu kama wivu ni hekima lakini sio ya mbinguni neno la Mungu linaambia kwamba this is not the wisdom that comes from god kwa hiyo manake Mtu anaweza kuwa na hekima lakini sio ya kimungu lakini utajuaje hiyo hekima sio ya kimungu ni pale ambapo kuna wivu. Kwa maana yake wivu ni hekima lakini sio hekima ya Mungu. Sasa hapo ni changamoto. Ubinafsi. Ubinafsi kidunia ni hekima 
according to James Sapaya Kobo lakini sio hekima iliyotoka mbinguni sasa imagine sasa huyu ni mtu ambaye ameomba hekima na anaweza kwamba okay I've been praying for hekima lakini sasa hajipimi kwamba mm, hii hekima nayo operate nayo sasa hivi katika haya maamuzi kwa sababu sasa kama kuna hekima ya dunia na hekima ya Mungu maana hapa lazima turudi kwenye maamuzi kwamba haya maamuzi nayo fanya nipime hii hekima nayo tumia huu wivu huu katika haya maamuzi mm? huu binafsi ambao na katika haya maamuzi je ni ubinafsi kama ni ubinafsi nafanya katika haya maamuzi maana yake automatic utumie hekima ya Mungu sasa hapa tunajifunza mstari wa 17 inasema lakini hekima itokayo mbinguni kwanza ni safi i love that kwanza ni safi ukisoma the english translation nakwambia pure purity sasa ebu waza mungu akiwa anaanza ni singi sasa ya mahusiano kwamba nao anasema kwamba nyumba hujengwa kupitia hekima maana sasa ndani ya hekima ukimomba mungu hekima kwenye relationship what you do ataleta ataku, atakupa desire ya purity desire ya kuwa um, ku keep the relationship pure ku keep relationship holy kuwa faithful to your to, to your partner your partner wewe kuwa faithful yani ile faithfulness ile holiness ile purity intention zuri Mungu what you will do ata bring hiyo desire ndani yako kwa sababu kio sema kwamba hekima lazima turudi kwamba matunda ya hekima ni yapi aha Mungu atanipa desire desire ya purity i want this relationship to be pure i want to be faithful to this woman I want to be faithful to this to this um to this man. Maana kisa za hata temptation zikija za namna gani, utaanza kuanza kuja. You know what? If I make this decision, will it keep purity kwenye mahusiano yangu? Kama haizi kuleta purity and keep purity au leta purity kwenye mahusiano yangu. What Ekima says what? Let me stop this. Ekima ya Kimungu itakuzuia kufanya maamuzi ambayo yataleta defilement, hayata keep purity kwenye mahusiano. Nasa imagine ukianza mahusiano ya namna hiyo ya purity and holiness and faithfulness utajikuta sasa msingi unakuwa ni mwema unavopanda juu huku juu hakutakuwa kuna ugomvi kwamba na muonea mke wangu hivi oh my husband is cheating on me or my wife is cheating on me kwa sababu tayari misingi ya chini you are thinking of faithfulness you are thinking of holiness na the only person who can help you with purity ni Mungu ni Mungu he only knows what holiness is what purity and what and defilement is kwa hiyo utagundua kwamba bado a man and wife they both need to go before God and ask God kwamba God I need my relationship to be pure help this relationship be pure remember you are building a relationship una build kitu chema kwa ajili yako na your partner kwa hiyo if you both pray for the same thing kwamba Mungu we want our relationship to be pure we want faithfulness in our relationship utajikuta sasa you are speaking one language both a man and a husband oneness god katikati yenu he will produce that sasa misingi hii utakundua huko mbele kutakuwa hakuna ugomvi sijui my husband kwa nini hajafika nyumbani paka saa hii kwa sababu tayari kuna na misingi mizuri kwamba you know what he is there because kuna kitu ambacho anakifanya ambacho kitaleta maendeleo zaidi kwenye familia yetu lakini sio issue ya purity kwa hiyo unakuwa umeshaiseto sasa kinaenda kusema kwambia kwamba sio tu kwamba inaleta ina, ina, ina hekima ya mbinguni ni safi lakini inapenda amani Nyumba ya kwanza kule inasema kwamba ina ugomvi. Nyumba ugomvi sio kutamaniwa kukaa. Lakini sasa ukiangalia hekima ya Mungu huku ina inakuja na amani. Ya kwamba sasa inakupa desire of peace. Kwamba you know what? I want to have peace for the sake of peace. You know let's work on this for the sake of peace. Kwa hiyo utagundua kwamba kwenye hekima inayotoka kwa Mungu na ukitaka kujua kweli hii hekima inatoka kwa Mungu lazima ujue kwamba niti kwa kwenye ama, hii niko kwenye relationship lakini kwenye relationship Mungu ananipa kupenda amani zaidi sasa kuna relationship ambazo una, unazisikia hawajafunga hata ndoa lakini wananuniana wanagombana wana yani ile desire for peace haipo sasa ukishaona hiyo ujue kwamba hapo ni changamoto if you are in the right relationship and you know it's god given relationship and you have that type of a problem means you really need you need god intervention you need god you need prayer you need to know kwamba his own hicho unachokisikia moyoni mwako chuki hasira na nyumba tunakwambia kwamba yani ikiwa na mwanaume anasikia hasira hiyo you need prayer then what you need you need prayer kwa sababu hiyo hasira haijatoka kwa mungu hekima inapenda amani 
Nenu la Mungu anambia kwamba upole eh utulivu kule kwenye ile nyumba ya mithali 17 moja neno la Mungu linasema kwamba eh nyumba yenye amani na utulivu it's better kuliko nyumba yenye yenye starehe ya chakula nzuri lakini na magumvi kwa hiyo sasa uzuri wa hekima ya Mungu kuna kuna inakuja na utulivu na neno la Mungu anasema iliyo inautayara kusikiliza wengine kuna anasema kwamba kisha inapenda amani tena ni ya upole iliyo tayari kusikiliza wengine kwa unyenyekevu iliyoja huruma na matunda mema isiyo pendelea mtu tena isiyokuwa na unafiki if you have time ninatamani ukae katika huu mstari wa 17 uone namna ambavyo hekima iliyotoka kwa Mungu ilivyo matunda yake ni yapi ili sasa kama umekuwa ni mtu ambaye umemsimu Mungu sana hekima katika ma- mahusiano yako ndoa yako familia yu imam yu father unaona chaos kwenye nyumba labda watoto wa behave, uh, behave well and you've been asking god for wisdom how can i uh, help my family to be to have peace how can i help my children to have peace sasa ukitaka kujua kwamba Mungu Mungu anachokifanya katika moyo wako atakachokifanya utagundua he will, he will walk in your heart na ataanza kukupa desires ambazo sasa ziko huku kwamba utakuwa sasa una unyenyekevu una unamsikivu zaidi utakuwa mtu mwenye huruma zaidi kwa Mungu what you do you begin to deal with your heart na as you begin to deal with your heart utagundua sasa katika ile hekima ambayo Mungu amekupa utakuwa una unyenyekevu utakuwa una uvumilivu utakuwa una upendo utatafuta amani sasa hiyo ni misingi mizuri according to the word hekima ambayo sasa ukiwa na hii misingi kwenye nyumba kwenye mahusiano neno la Mungu linaniambia kwamba it is better to have a house ambayo imejengwa na hekima na hekima very specific hekima ya kimungu kwa sababu sasa kwenye hekima ya kimungu tukiwa tuna hii hekima ya kimungu kujenga mahusiano yetu kujenga ndoa zetu kujenga familia zetu kuna guarantee ya ku live familia au kuishi familia ambayo ina stability kuachia watoto wako um, historia ya ndoa yenye stability kuachilia familia yako ndoa uh, au familia um, ndoa ambao wana observe you know kids are very observant wana observe uh, wazazi wenye upendo wenye uvumilivu lakini vile vile una unaachilia vile vile hekima kwa watoto wako kwamba namna ya ku behave how parents they should behave lakini vile vile namna ambao you are able to handle their problems wakienda kwenye familia zao au wakienda kwenye jamii they also know how to behave mimi ninaamini neno la leo limekusaidia kwa sababu ukiwa kazini ukiwa kwenye biashara huko tunapoenda kwa ajili ya kutafuta breakfast ya uchumi bado mwisho wa siku unabidi urudi nyumbani hakuna kitu chema kama kurudi kwenye nyumba ambayo ina amani na utulivu na mimi ninaamini kwamba